Good morning. Morning. Uh, this is my this is my annual noxious weed eradication progress report for last year. Um, it's required by the state. It's February fifteenth every year. Uh, what it basically breaks down, it goes through and uh, breaks down the financials of what we did for the year, and then uh, it goes through and I, I do some uh, adjusting on. Well, I do a summary, a weed summary, and a survey through the year, and then I go through and do my adjustments on on acreages and everything, and it just kind of shows you what I have as far as uh, my summaries, and then what I've sold, uh, my prices, and then it goes through the actual treatments, acreages of treatments on different on different uh, noxious weeds. And I say it's just KDA, it's something the KDA requires every year. Um, after I get assigned, I'll get copies, and then I'll give them back up so you guys can kind of look through them. <coughs> There's a place for all three of you to sign. So this will require a motion. To, uh, uh, make the motion. Oh, I'm going to be able to read the sweet progress report. Okay, it's been moved and second that we accept the Knox's weed report. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Now you can sign. Okay. <laughs> Keep this official. That's a fancy pen. Yeah, I don't know that. 33rd. Trucks down to Wichita, getting sprayer going through. Should get that back middle of the month. Um, I'm looking at some new chemical. I talked to Phil a little bit. New chemical on chemical mo. To try and change up the chemistry. They're running into the state of Kansas is running into some resistance problems with everything. So we're looking to change up the chemistry on our chemical mo a little bit. So waiting for information from some Dupont and Dow on that. I've had several people ask me about the back slips. You know how you guys <coughs> won't want to spray them. <laughs> I mean, what you're doing, I think, along the, the front slope of the ditch looks really good. But what, I mean, the back slope. Well, the back slope, I don't I'm I, I spray the entire, well, spray the entire ditch. Right. And then they're just, they're just not enough residual. Because pigweeds, hey. you know, pigweeds come late. Right. So, and that's I mean, do we problem. need to mow it sooner? Or, I mean, because I think if you get the pigweeds knocked out, you'll establish, eventually establish grass on the back slopes, too, like you, you have on the front side. Well, there's... But, I mean, not, not, not every... Not every commercial... Not every ground gets sprayed by commercial applicators. Well, that's true. I'm I'm just, I just brought it up because it's <laughs> yeah. been brought up to me. And, and I mean, Phil's well, asked me the same question of what do we do to get the grass back there? And I think, you know, if we eliminate the pigweeds and the, some yeah. of the bigger weeds from... And from maybe, the back slope. And maybe we could try mowing it you know, might, in June yeah, or July, right. first part of June or July this yeah. year, and see if that helps. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean that's just something while you both were here I wanted to ask. Yeah, this. I mean, then that keeps the guys from trying to farm it. I mean, right. I know, everybody knows why they're trying to farm it. They're trying to knock the weeds right. out. Yeah. That's farmer's biggest deal with weeds. Yeah. Well, I know when there's orders turned in, they, that's the first thing they say is spray the ditch. Yeah, <laughs> don't spray the no, ditch. I know, I know that. We've had that discussion. Yeah. But I mean, it's... Yeah. I think if we're if we're all on the same page, I think it. Well, we'll try that with a shoe. Okay. Well, we've I've never sprayed uh, as far as you know. After I mean, I spray early to mm -hmm. to for the cool season, get the warm season the grasses growing. But I, then I spot spray. I don't spray the as far as the solid. On the, yeah. Yeah. And so I mean that could be something. I mean that's going to be quite a bit more money. Right. But we can we can try some test plots on that some miles too. See how it works. See what we can do. But yeah, the main thing is to keep everybody else off. Yeah, of yeah, that's kind of that's the biggest challenge. It's two four D. The tort on two four D is my is the blind weed is the broadleaf. Uh, you should allow the grass to come on through. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't affect the grass. But then dealing with any two four Ds or any phenoxies or anything like that, then you're dealing with cotton, cut soybeans, and we don't have yeah. we we have. A lot more cotton in the county last year. 
Yeah. And if you will have this year, I imagine. And if you will have some good, it looked like it was. Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing, too, it's, you know, as far as complaints, that's going to be the biggest, because cotton is so susceptible. And so there is a, there is, which I want to push everybody, there is a sensitive crop website mm -hmm. that we really need to push so we can look on it and see where it is. Because there's a lot of times, early spring, that's why I try to get my spraying done early in some of those areas. Because you come back and, uh, and your T4Ds and, and dicameras and stuff can move on. It makes um, an acid-based phenoxy that you might look into. It's a little bit, quite a bit more money, but it's... You don't have to worry about the volatility. Right. Besides, I, don't, I don't use any ester at all. I don't sell any esters. Mm -hmm. I don't use any esters. I use all amine formulations, so it's very right. volatile. But well, I mean, you still get the control yeah. like the ester, but it's, but it's virtually yeah. zero volatility. They price those things up. Yeah, but I tell you, <laughs> I mean, we, we started using it, and it's really, it because it, it takes the, you know, the... Is that clarity or is that... No, I'll get you the name okay. of the product. All right. Thank Stress. This is not something that we have to do. It's just available to us if we would like to do it. They're just trying to get very simple. We're at spur. What would that mean for you to do? We just mow the ditches and mow the ditches and just watch out. And I did talk to Barry McMahon, and yeah, he said had a two inch overlay in 1998. And the last time, K19 was done in 2000, and they didn't do anything to it because I've heard since such a good statement, the state would give them money to do that on mine. And so it was chip sealed last in 2002, so it probably does get chip sealed on it, so if we get it, then they get the paperwork done this year, we would probably, probably chip seal it this year, just because it's in that rotation where we're up in the northeast corner anyway. Talk with John Hobby Box and he said that's probably a pretty pretty decent offer for 20. It, it'd take care of it for 20 years, and that's what they figure a two inch overlay in there sometime for 20 years. And I said, Well, John, <laughs> I don't know when we've ever put a two inch overlay on anything that was, wasn't a state project, and that's, that's been several years ago. They figure it's a two inch overlay would run about $100,000. So, do you think the price is okay then for John? John thought it was a fair offer. When I'm talking with Dennis uh, Ray, the, Ray the, Reaper, the rice counter supervisor, and I asked him what his fee was. He says, well, <laughs> he thought they might do it. They've, they've got that spur that goes into one of the They were offering that back to them. So he thought they might do it, but he didn't. <laughs> he said, no, as far as that goes, that would be some good shit to it. <laughs> Very long. Probably not. I don't know how many little spur roads they've got like that, but yeah, I'm sure they do. I have a guy that will do it this time, I'm sure it'll come up and get my ears. What's your feelings? I think it cost us probably this year to see what it would cost more if we run about $11,000. $11,000. I mean, long term. I don't see it being as issue as being as we're up there to mow right. anyway, so I mean it's just another hour at the moment. Or not even that really because
So this two hundred thousand is a lump sum, or they spend that over? The, the way I get it is a lump sum. They got this three million dollars, and then if this process gets started, they'll get their engineer, or contractor, power. Now, is there any culverts or bridges? There's maybe <laughs> there may be one or two culverts in that mile that that, that, that on, yeah. that's uh, turnoffs, but yeah, not on there the is road no, itself. There is, there is no And they've got the ditches clean. I mean, yeah. Back to the right of the yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got a nice ride line. Well, I don't know. Since we're up there working anyway, you know, it wouldn't be a, a, a burden where you'd have to haul equipment and material. No, it's, not, it's and not like it's some, you know, out of the way place because yeah. when, we have a, when we have to go up there and take care of the sewer and stuff, it's Right there on the way. Well, it's only a mile. Not yeah. quite a mile. Yeah. 0.995. <laughs> <laughs> and where does that start? So we're clear on where it starts. <laughs> the edge of, I, suppose, I suppose at the edge of their right of way down there on K19. Because where they sealed it, I looked at that yesterday when I was up there eating lunch. When they, where they sealed, where they started sealing that, they started that on the edge of 19. Do you think that our responsibility would start at, at the edge of their right of way, not at the edge of their right of way? Not at the edge of 19. So they that east west drive the on the east west drive from yeah. the north side of the right of way. That's yeah. that's what we do on all our approaches. So now. we don't end up we, in the we, deal we, like we are at Stafford. Yeah, we don't end up. I mean, there is quite a bit of truck traffic mm -hmm. that turns off of that. that really yeah, that's all right. Very simple thing. We never had any problems. So it's got a good place to it. So they maintain the intersection <coughs> down there, up to the edge of the right of way. Down on the south end. Yeah. I think that's one question we might ask. Have it. Yeah, I mean, asking that would have been clear before we start. Okay, that's that's no problem. So I, I can get that clarification. Yeah. Now. But I mean, I don't. Just so it's not turned to gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, how's your the sewer grid, or how is that where you take clean a bunch of the ditches and stuff? And problems with the blowing and stuff? Is that you know, there hasn't been up there. Had some other places that we've had some or mm -hmm. soft spots in it. No, it's. But we had, I mean, we, we had to repair some while we were doing it. I mean, yeah. we, knew, we knew that was going to happen, but we, we still got some dirt we're going to haul and put on there and incorporate that using that sky fire. And then we did crown, make sure we had crown. And when we hauled that dirt, we hauled the most to, uh, we don't haul, we had some other soil, some uh, better type yeah. soil yeah. that we just kind of traded, traded out of it. So that's what we're going to do down south here, too. We've got some. some Soil down south of Stafford. I don't remember that. Go over there and put on this. Leesburg and that. I don't know the rest. Did you look at any few spots in the southwest grid? No, I haven't. Okay. To be honest. Yeah, I think this map is here. Yeah. Right. I think so. You have to do that approval first. Yeah. I think I, with the exception of the clarification about the intersection to the edge of the right of way. Yeah. Whatever the terminology is. I'll make a motion we allow Phil to accept the offer for the KDOT with the 0.995 miles K219 in the sewer uh, as the county responsibility. So, okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Motion carried. Okay. So, and within the next couple of days, or are we looking at a week or two before they make a um, decision? They said they're going to first come, first serve. So, I will give them 
This just came out Monday, so I imagine most of the people you may be one first. I mean, yeah, okay. Unless some of the commissions have at different times, but most of them come out Monday. So. Um, there's high risk rural roads money available. There's four or five million dollars. I can't remember what saying. But the application is due here this week. And right in Barton County is doing that great to HIP signs on all the routes. And I would like to do more of that for the county. We'll just do that great all of our signs coming up. All our signs off our township roads to our roads. All, all our stop signs are not each other. And this is just, this saves us some money on the ball. But I figured out the other day, probably be close to 8,000 or 8 to 10,000, and we can do this with our forces, and a lot of this is 100%. Which I thought. Yes, sir. So you think you can get some money to. We can turn in for a minute. It's so you don't know. That's yeah. <coughs> but more than likely we will because so they, they, they like these type of projects that are simple, easy, ready to go. You know, it's, that doesn't, are not elaborate like, have a, like a lot of engineering. And I did talk, talk to John and then we had to do paperwork for this. Okay. So anything the county's out is just labor? More labor. To remove and replace. Well, the risk of the expense of 8000 if they don't match it, right? Over time, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. They, I mean, it's not a match deal. It's, it's, it's 100% on the oh. to upgrade your signs to UTC. Okay. But it, it's also a deal that needs commission approval. So if the paperwork comes in, we'll have to ask about the sign. And I don't know if it has to be done this week or what. So we probably need to approve it today if we're going to do this. So that would say we need to move forward. So any motion to pursue the the grant from the high rural high risk rural roads. That's hard for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> <Man, laughs> uh, pursue the grant for the high risk rural roads. Okay. That's <laughs> so that you said that. <laughs> it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Home Township Day. Do you guys want this on a Wednesday? Do you want it on a Monday? Or, I mean, what, what would be the best for you guys? So, yeah. On the Township Days? We have an annual meeting with the Township. Whatever day it ain't going to be icy, it's snowy. Yeah. <laughs> well, in March, it's, it's yeah. It don't matter to me, really. I mean, You're we, thinking over a lunch deal? Or yeah, it'll be a lunch deal. Yeah. 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 I think whatever works for the townships. Yeah. You just want to set that down. Well, if you guys don't have any complaints, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see what the vendors, what works for the vendors, and try to work it out. The news is trying to have sheep back there. Yeah, all the, all the department heads and the officials usually have an invite. Right. Enough, it's, I don't know if it's there yet or not. Yeah. 
it's a new twin. Hundred thousand. Versus sixty-five for how many years? Ten to twelve. Is what we've been doing. What you need? <laughs> it's all dependent on our budget. Your newer truck would last longer than twelve years, probably. Yeah, I, I was thinking you'd probably get fifteen to twelve yeah. somewhere in that area. Because we put some ROM twenty to thirty thousand on them a year, so in a ten-year span, it's three hundred thousand at the most. Yeah. So, and I'm sure the truck's not in the issue. So I'll, we'll, I'll do some more cost comparison. And maybe that, you know, I just want you to be <coughs> Why don't you look at the, like we talked the other day, the, you know, maybe the new and done oh, okay. versus your thoughts on that too. Oh, uh, yeah, well, at some point I would really like to. I mean, uh, maybe, I mean, if, if it makes sense to buy one of those instead of a truck, then maybe it's. Sure, but the only thing sure is, if, if we, yeah, the only thing is, if, if we do that, we lose a snow pile, we'll, some of our snow pile, if we, if we take the truck out and do it, so that, that's kind of, I mean, I mean we're brainstorming phase, that's, yeah, I mean, sure, it's, I mean, it's, we got to look at everything, yeah. I agree, yeah. there's some prices, there's some well, the only deal I had was what, when Ryan was here with the one with the back slopes. And we'll try to just share. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Doris. Hello. Uh -huh. Hey, Doris. Hi, Doris. See, when it starts to get over here, there's a problem with the, the 
but if something's happening with them. This kid has an out of state in cross and it got me over the wrong way across. So I had to be repaired and had to be repaired. And the good the good news about billing is is we have a state website called WebIZ that's having a billing launch. The way I understand it's supposed to work is at the end of the week. You can just upload, you know, just stuff like all the stuff you did for the week into their system and just parse it out to all we as long as we have the correct information in there, we'll just send it all that. So that's pretty good. So the state's providing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. free. Yeah. That's the building module. It's not like council. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'll have Janice ask if they have another one. Because this just is not accurate. The first first couple of columns probably are. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a meeting in Great Bend yesterday about WIC. You guys know what WIC is? It's mm -hmm. a mental food program. You have to um, qualify financially. You have to have a nutritional risk factor, which if you don't have one, we find you. So you qualify. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after 20 some years of Barton County being here and taking care of a lot of our fiscal part of it, and part of the contract work, we're going to First, we sent our affidavits to Barton County and they need three and four months later we get reimbursed for our charges. Now I get to send them direct to the state. <clears throat> I have other, um, like the breastfeeding for counselors, for instance. I send my affidavit and I can check in two weeks. <clears throat> Did we have to pay Barton County to do that? Mm -hmm. I took an administrative fee out of that. So that will go away too. So, yeah. um, the only thing I have to do is apply to my single county. Yes. I don't think, and Barton County is still going to provide a registered dietitian because I would have a hard time finding one of them. Is that used to our Stafford County program? Yeah, we have about 180 participants. Mm -hmm. um, today's a weekday, Wednesdays are weekdays. We thought we were going with the new can care. We thought we were going to get a bigger BSC payment vaccine for children. We can't charge for the vaccine because it comes from the state. We charge an administration fee. We've been charging $1,480, which is the max payable. And then there was a newsletter that came out said they were going to go up to $20. Oh, cool. uh, I got my first check from Amerigroup the other day. It was $1,415. So I have to check that. I, would, I, I changed my billing to $20, so now I'm writing off even more than I was before, so I don't know whether I should need to go back down to the 14 meter and never to research that. One thing I don't like about QuickBooks is you can't get the dead people off of there. They still show up. Because if you've ever had a transaction, they don't go away. And so one time I sat down on somebody that had passed away and I deleted all of their payments and all of their invoices and still not gone. Mm. So a lot of these people, you know, it looks like a lot of people. A lot of them have zeros and they've either moved or they died or how old is your contract? 2004. Oh. I, need to update. Yeah. I, I talked to Cindy last year about, uh, or the year before, or the year before that, <laughs> down in Rose Ridge, because she used to sit too. Well, we were going to split the program. We were going to buy the update and then split the cost. I wonder if CIC has um, a uh, program. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you know what any other counties so use? What is quick, what is a lot of quick and cost? Quick books? QuickBooks. QuickBooks. It's in our books. Yeah. But I would imagine if you have an updated from, I mean, even they probably don't send out emails for update. I, mean, yeah. I don't use all the components on that. I mean, all I use is the accounts receivable part and
A lot of counties use KIPS. It's called KIPS. And it's very expensive, so we don't even know. What's that standing for? Is that something EMS and medicine? health can use together? KIPS? No. It's, a, it's a thing specifically for health departments. It's, it's some of those things for public health. Kansas in, interface for public health services or something. It's like, I get it's lost very, you, the first year came out, it was free, so we had it. And then when they wanted to charge a hundred and some dollars per user, it got kind of expensive. So we just, you know. We'll talk to Jamie, so that's what I'm doing. I'm See, sure he can tell you what to get. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I need some input. I'll talk to the doctors too. And yeah. Jan is showing that. Yeah, I will. And
the last, the last one? one? Uh -huh. I think so. I, we couldn't quite remember, and without just coming up and asking for an exact, I guess it really wouldn't matter anyways. We need to get rid of that trailer and then we go back to the city of Seward. Yeah, it, it, it's oh, owned by them. We do insure it um, because we, I mean, it, we use it and we, we uh, what it is, is it's, it's just a uh, service bed in the, the frame of the trailer, the frame of the truck. Um, but it's it's our equipment. Uh, we insure it. I'm almost 100% that they actually own it. Um, I don't know where it came from. Yeah. I mean, it's been here before I was here, so I don't know for sure where it came from. Um, well, so that'll be a you know a cost out another cost right. out insurance too. Um, and you know about the five ton military trucks we've been getting from the Forest Service. We were pretty lucky actually to get those because um, for the longest time they haven't had anything, and I just happened to call them at the right time I think, and. Uh, they were starting to get some more in. They they have the state forest service also has to do applications to the federal government, and they can approve. and And for a while, they kind of had an application messed up, so they couldn't get anything, not even parts to the federal government for a while. And so a phone call at the just the right time got us these two free trucks. Uh, the first one will always remain property of the federal government, just like the deuce and hats we got. The second one we just got. Um, it is through. The, a new program called the Federal Firefighter Program. After they say after two to three federal cycles, it, they'll actually just send us the title. And so that one will be um, our property. We would like to our, our plan is to get rid of all the deuce and a halves. They're just they're 68s and they have 11970 deuce and a half. They definitely hit their limit. Um, they're issue after issue after issue. They're difficult to drive. Uh, if you haven't driven one, they're, they're pretty touchy. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, you need to know, you need to know well how to drive one of those trucks. Um, so these five tons are, are a wonderful replacement for that because they do out for the Allison Automatic and, and the new newer Cummins diesels that we can get parts for, um, things like that. ABS brakes, uh, and they're actually a, a lot more stable. So I've been, ch I've been keeping an eye on the for sale side of things for quite some time. I know through government liquidation, uh, anybody can buy one of these trucks. It don't matter who you are. Um, those trucks are usually the trucks that have 3,000 um, um, They They do not usually get the, the government rebuilds in that, that um, public side thing. The, uh, then the surplus, however, gets uh, some of these trucks as well. And some of theirs aren't military rebuilt as well, but they do have um, at least two of them right now that are full military rebuilds in 2010, just like the first truck we got. One's got 11 and a half hours on the thing. Uh, the one, the first one we got had 17 hours. Uh, the other one I think has 200 hours on it or something like that, but basically they're, it, it's just like sitting outside running, drive around a lot kind of time on them. Uh, they, they range in price anywhere from twelve dollars to $20,000, whether they're full rebuild or not. Usually the $20,000 ones are if you can find in the, in the public sector a full rebuild. $12,000 will usually get you something that needs some work. Um, federal Surplus has had some of these trucks at $12,000 for a while, and they just drop them into five. They, uh, they are going to try to push some of these trucks. They've got some dump trucks and things like that. So. They dropped these trucks to five. I went ahead and called them. I said, is this correct? Because this is a pretty amazing price. And he said, oh, yeah. So I asked him to put a hold on, on one of these trucks for us until I could talk to you. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and buy one of these trucks at 5000 because I don't think we're going to get that chance again. Um, that price is probably where we're at on that first truck. You know, uh, that first truck. I, I need to sit down and, and figure everything out, but I think we're going to have five thousand dollars into that first truck compared to a truck like this could cost us eighty thousand dollars if we're going to go buy a, a commercial mm -hmm. version of this type of truck. So I, I think that um, I really don't want to miss out on a truck at this price, especially with eleven and a half hours, because there's I just there's probably no way that we're going to find this again. Um, and uh, 
this will get us farther into that getting rid of our Houston hats as well. Uh, and the good thing is from now on, these trucks will be a straight bed swap. Um, we're waiting on this other one to get painted. The Maxville crew has the truck, they're sanding it, they're going to paint it. And all it is is switching some mounts back a little bit, put another bed right on it. Do a little bit of wiring, and for, well, we already have the paint, that's the good thing, you know. We, we uh, actually, uh, they sold us more paint than we needed on the first truck, so we have that extra paint, so we may be into the second truck for 500 bucks. I mean, just some wiring and things like that, so. How many of these the house did you say you have left? There are a total of four, and when when the this yellow one that we we had go down on us, that unfortunately we replaced that one instead of the deuce and a half, so we've only sent back one deuce and a half, so we still have three. The three deuce and a halves are at uh, Hudson Sewer and Radium. Um, the Radium deuce and a half has just received a considerable amount of work because it had an engine fire, so they um, it was over at Gary's Auto in Stafford for some time getting lots of little bits and pieces replaced. Um, and then the, some of the crews up north kind of changed the way the truck is um, built, so it, it's a more useful truck. Um, it's probably one of the better uses we have, although they all have the same basic problems. Um, we buy dot five brake fluid in bulk. <laughs> so, and, and that's even the way. I mean, what, what I guess what I'm getting at is that, I mean, if you truck like you've got for five thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean why wouldn't you buy two of them and face them out quicker? There there are two available actually. Um, I mean if they're a quality truck, yeah. Like there, there, and, and they absolutely are. They uh, I don't know if, if you guys got to see our first one mm -hmm. up close or not. Um, but I'm, I mean if we're talking brand new hoses, brand new belts, brand new tires, uh, which is Turns out to be a big thing. Um, probably going to be asking about some other tires here after. You want to say them tires? But I, I have actually, uh, I've actually found some pretty good prices on those tires. But I think shipping is going to kill us all. But um, everything, I mean, no matter what it is, everything was either rebuilt or replaced, including engine transfer case. I mean, transfer case on these things is fifteen grand. What and year? The, what I think. Real, real this one will probably be. I think the two they have. One's an eighty-four and an eighty-five. Or one's yes. an 85 or an 86. 84 and 84 and 85. Okay. Oh, so you've got the print out of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, the, uh, and they're A1s, which gets you the 250, the Cummins 250, which is a non-turbo. Uh, it's, it's like a lot of tractors use, but without the turbo. The newer A2s, which you'll see probably in the 89 to 92 range mostly, um, which is like the second truck we've got, gets you the 8.3 liter. With a turbo, turbo, I tell you what, that thing is so quiet that it, it's it's pretty amazing how much difference that level of noise. <laughs> Didn't realize how much it affects you on a fire, but when you can drive a truck with that, if that's that quiet, it's pretty nice. So, but these will be the 250 Cummins motors, Allison Automatics ABS. You've got 11 hours on the rebuild. Mm -hmm. On the other one. Hours. Mm -hmm. And what they do with the, the rebuild is they, 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 I mean, they go down to the sandblasting of things. They, it has every, literally everything is brand new or rebuilt. Well, your equipment from some <coughs> some of the other trucks go you know, right onto the one, the one at Maxwell's doing. Yeah, the one at Maxwell was an extended wheelbase deuce, so that helped us out considerably because the the length of these five tons is two foot long. Um, so this extended wheelbase deuce in half is actually eight inches longer, so it works out really perfect. Uh, I'm going to have to check. I think that's the only extended wheelbase one we had, maybe radiance. All we did was like the little truck that is here in St. John. All we did was we make a we make a piece that goes across the front. It, it's just a little platform. So that's that's the fix. Pretty simple fix. But other than that, yes, they mount the frames right in for the deuce and a half width and the so they mount put right the up. deuce and a half up for silent bid like you did the other one. We, we can't because they're yeah, they're actually they go back. They're, they're back. all the deuce and halves <laughs> on that property, which is the federal right. excise property program. Mm -hmm. So they just get pulled back on a on a little voice in line. But these trucks will own these trucks, yes, yeah. we'll own these outright and we can do whatever we would like with these trucks. The federal firefighter and the FEP trucks, um, well, the federal firefighter, once it becomes ours, we can do whatever we want. The 
FAP trucks, federal excess truck, the first truck, we will always have to um, follow the, the Forest right. Service's guidelines. Mm -hmm. Thousand gallons, um, different things. So these trucks, would you put a bigger tank on them? Or? Um, it'd be nice to. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're limited to a thousand gallons with the, the right. federal. It's so the one worst. If we choose to buy these other ones. They would, they would keep the tanks they have okay. for the moment mm -hmm. until we have an issue with the tank. And then it would be nice to try to... How big it is that? We've got one that's got a thousand gallons, one that's got eight, nine hundred gallons, something like that. So they're, they're pushing that thousand gallon limit, but a couple of them are just shy of a thousand gallons. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember if, if we got that detail in here. Who um, puts that limit on it? The size of your tank. The state's the the state does. Thousands of as as huh. Now now they will carry a considerable amount more weight, but they say unless it's on what do they call it uh, good weather roads. If it's on a good weather road, then you can haul two thousand gallons, but you can only call it a tender at that point. Uh, no off road. Um, I was looking at Hudson. Yeah, Hudson's truck has eight hundred gallon tank. So. Uh, Eventually, we'd like to upfit those a little bit. Um, we like the lower profile and just keep them down a little bit. But, um, you know, another foot taller to get another 200 gallons wouldn't be a problem either. So that's that's the first thing on that truck. We'd like to buy the one. Um, I personally wouldn't mind two of them. Well, if, that if, price, if you're okay with that, right. It's the price of a copy. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and the good thing yeah. is, <laughs> the good thing is we sold that we sold that one truck for five thousand for fifty three hundred already. So one of them is basically paid for. If we can get that much out of the second truck, I mean, in essence, they both end up in free trucks as well. That money comes out of their budget or out of general, or what is that? Take down your it comes out of fire reserve. Uh -huh. That's what we need. Because we've got a vehicle. Got well, actually, plenty there to do that. Oh yeah. Even if we choose to do both. And even even if we don't take it strictly out of the reserve, we've got a uh, we've got a vehicle <laughs> fund uh -huh, that that has enough money in it to take both of these trucks out of as well. Do you think they'll have um, the newer trucks come about with the turbos? I mean, the diesel motor without the turbo is just kind of a yeah. Um, surprisingly, this, this truck will, will run pretty good um, down the road. Now they're limited gearing and and right. bangs to about 60 miles an hour, but. Tell you what, it, it, it'll move just as well as that 400 uh, turbo does, although there is a noticeable difference with that turbo. Yeah. Um, what's happening right now is they're releasing a lot of trucks back, the, the federal government is. Um, a lot of the trucks that are coming back are the A2s, but they're not getting the rebuilds. Um, the, the military goes through a, a thing about hours and you know how old they are, the years. The reason a lot of these A1s are getting full rebuilds just because by military standards they hit that timeline. And so it's going to take another uh, five or six years probably before all of these A2s start getting uh, sent in for a, a mandatory rebuild. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't think that we would get any of these A2s. It would be hard to find an A2 right now that's got a full military rebuild, I believe. I haven't seen any anyways. I'd be more inclined to get a boat. I do I mean, if it's a truck that you want, I mean, you can use. Absolutely. Stop this drain with some repairs. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm sick and tired of every time I turn around, I send something. Do you think, shop. You, I mean, if we choose to do both, do you think you, the departments will do the work to switch them over? Um, Maxwell has wholeheartedly, they came and grabbed that truck and they wanted it badly. Um, they might not do that second one. They may not want to do that. I, I, I have found out, I can tell you by personal experience, um, you may not want to do a second one. Yeah. The good thing is we've got a whole other area of the county that hasn't experienced one, and they want one really bad, too. They uh, they have been drooling to get one of these trucks. So I know uh, that the Hudson, and I'm, I'm sure Seward and Radium guys up there will be, uh, guys and gals both, will be more than willing to do this to get one of these trucks. Right. I guess, do I ask you for permission to buy two trucks from the federal surplus? Change your recommendation to two trucks. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I, I need to. It's <laughs> your recommendation. <laughs> I'd move that we 
purchase two 510 military 6x6 six six cargo trucks at a price of 5000 a piece or 2000 I said that. It's been moved in second. We purchased two 510 military trucks for a price of $10,000. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Good to go on the second one? Mm -hmm. So I've got, got a chance to read it. How do you like these anyway before I start? Oh, mm -hmm. are these, are these good? I like the information ahead of time. Okay, yeah. that's this especially one. in depth. Yeah, yeah. this one is um, there. Tactical, tactical radio channels. I don't know how much you know about our radio channels currently. Um, I mean, it kind of tells you in there. Channel 1 is law enforcement, channel 2 is fire and EMS, channel 3 is the road and bridges. Uh, we've got a couple others. We've got a tactical channel uh, in existence that is used to be owned by the St. John PD, staff and county uh, sheriff's department took it over. Um, and then there's another tactical channel out there that uh, is fire and EMS tactical channel. The good thing about the tactical channels is it's radio to radio. Uh, it's good and bad both. Um, with the, the law enforcement, the fire and EMS, and the road and bridges, we use a repeater system. So uh, if we're on a handheld, good luck hitting the repeater. That's why we, uh, years ago, put in this canopy system with the voters in good locations. If you can get two or three miles on a handheld, you can get a voter and then shoot it back to the repeater. Uh, you also know about the federal guidelines about narrow banding, right? That, in a perfect world, utilizing numbers is about a 20 to 30 percent reduction in distance. I'm guessing that we're going to find about a 25 percent reduction in our in our distances that we can get. We already have a hard time getting handheld reception anywhere uh, besides close to a town with a motor. Uh, and because of how these motors work, sometimes not even in the town uh, or close to St. John where the repeaters are. It, it gets us back to utilizing the mobiles in the trucks. Now we're not always in the trucks to utilize the mobiles, uh, so we kind of got to shift back and forth on how we do things. Um, what I would like to do is currently every fire, every every medical call we go on, we're utilizing a channel two um, to use all of our traffic. And so when you have like on an icy day, you have a slide off. You get people to go out on that slide off and start talking about what they need or, or something and another one comes out, you have to stop all traffic and because you got an emergency come, traffic coming out. Also, when it gets to some fires, busy fire season, if you listen to the scanner, it's just constant. And it's hard to get information back to dispatch um, through that, that repeated channel. What I want to do is to start getting everybody to start using tactical channels out on the scene. That's radio to radio. You don't have to try to hit the repeater. Um, and by utilizing that, we free we free up the channel too for emergency traffic or for talk direct back to dispatch. Um, with the two tactical channels we have now, one law enforcement, one fire. Uh, on on a given fire, it's just not quite enough because you run into the same thing on your tactical channel because you have too much traffic. We try to we try to keep that traffic down by by um, minimizing the only necessary talk on a radio channel. Um, it would benefit us to have some more tactical radio channels, uh, which are non repeater channels. Hopefully, this will solve any um, problems of not being able to get emergency traffic out. Uh, Dispatch won't have to sit there and listen to every firefighter that has access to the radio, listening to what's going on on the fire scene. Um, so that, that's the reason for the tactical radio channels here. Uh, the cost of the radio channels is paperwork, uh, somebody else to do the paperwork, and then um, asking the FCC if we can have them. That's the cost of the radio channels. Um, I believe it's a I'm going to tell you wrong. Uh, Five-year license? Are you wrong? I, I can't remember offhand unless I look at the FCC's website. Uh, so this cost will will be now, but it won't be. It won't be this much years down the road just to relicense them. So that price was 820 total. Half of that is for paperwork, and the other half is just to ask uh, FCC if we can have them. 
Is that, is that a new frequency or are you on the same frequency? This will be adding tactical. two new tactical frequencies. Okay. So we have, um, it'll be in the 150, it'll be in the VHF, 150 megahertz range. I can't tell you. Yeah, they decide, but I can't tell you for sure. Um, that'll allow long board to use them, fire and EMS to use them. Uh, hopefully we'll get another tornado that comes through as close as it did. You know, but that, a situation like that causes a lot of radio traffic, a considerable amount of radio traffic. And if you can set somebody, you know, if you're in this region here, searching for houses, you're on this tactical channel. If you're over here, you're on this tactical channel. <laughs> you don't get crosstalk, but then you can come back to channel two and, and give out your important information. Or same on fire. If you're on this side of the fire, you're on tactical one. Or if you're on this side, you're tactical two. And if you're on this one, three. That way you don't get crosstalk or you can get two fires going at one time and you're not, you're not stepping on everybody's communication. So. Is that a first mud or explain it very well? Or? So by submitting for a license, we're pretty well assured that we'll get those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, this lady, the APCO is the. Um, For government agencies, they're the contact point. The yeah, government agency has to have a contact point to the FCC. APCO is that contact point. So whomever we went through, we would be paying this. If we went through another source, we'd be paying the same price plus their paperwork. So we just go straight through APCO. Uh, she emailed me the other day asking if this was a, a go yet or not. And I said, you know, we've got to wait. All it is is she, she puts in some paperwork. The FCC checks it off, gives us a... Um, Give us our channels and then we can put those in the radio channel. The two tactical channels that you have now, you can't communicate with the new ones. You're going to get them. They, um, they will all be individual channels. Yes. Yeah. So we'll switch it over there. Yeah. So say we get a fire breaks out, um, we send this station and this <laughs> station. What I would like to happen is that dispatch kind of controls that, so they page out. Um, Stafford and Hudson to a fire. Um, they're going to be coming in from different areas, probably going to be having fire at different locations. So Stafford uh, dispatch will tell them once on scene, change to attack one. Uh, Hudson, change to attack two. So they'll page out on channel two. Whoever's in charge of that fire will maintain um, scanning of both tactical channels and they will have the communication direct back to dispatch on the repeated channel. So you'll be able to have communication from Controlling guy at the fire on both channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all of our radios will have these tactical so channels. So switch it back and forth. And all you, you, all the, the person in charge of the fire just scans. Um, scans, you leave, you leave channel two as your priority channel, so when you pick up the mic, um, it reports to channel two. If you've got to change to tack one, you just turn the knob or push the up down button. And then you speak on which channel you need to. Well, I think it's essential. I mean, that's what the, you know, the problem was they had a 911. Communication is absolutely one is the best necessity that we have. I, I guess what bothers me is not knowing the organization of how, who's controlling the, you know, who's controlling or who's designating what channel people are going to be on and so just a free for all and all yeah. of a sudden nobody knows. Right. That's why what I want to do is, is, is we have an input in this. Currently when you go to a, when you go to a fire, you just on channel two unless the person on scene says, hey, everybody switch over to attack one because there's just way too much traffic. Um, what I would like to have is that when that station gets paged, dispatch will we'll, we'll choose. Um, and it'll just be a numerical choice to choose TAC 1 and 2, um, depending upon how many people get paged. Or the person on scene, once they, once they decide that um, another, maybe another channel is, is necessary, then they'll tell that, that individual or that group of individuals, you need to operate on TAC 3, or you need to operate on this tactical channel. So, one question I had when I read this, it said channel 2, you've had troubles with coverage. Do you not have troubles with the other two channels? Well, then that's the good thing about on channel 1 and 3, you mean? Yeah. Um, we do. We, we've got coverage problems. On all of them? 
Channel 3, Road and Bridges, is actually a, um, a smaller wattage repeater from what I can what I can remember. Channel 2, I think, is our biggest wattage repeater at about 200 to 250 watts. Um, I'm just wondering if you might have your repeater located in a bad spot. It's as close to center as we can get it currently without building our own tower. Um, but I can talk on a mobile radio, I can talk from Great Bend and Pratt. Now since narrow banding, that, that reception has gotten pretty scratchy. I've got to get closer to the closer to the border of Solar County to do. So as far as output, we've got some pretty good output. It's, I think it's just the way our county set up, you know, just lies um, up by the refuge. It's a dead zone. Cell phones, radios, anything. Yeah. So um, that'll be a benefit in itself to having a, a, a tactical channel up by the refuge is that you're not trying to, to reach out at a distance to hit a, a voter to get back to the repeater or to get back to the repeater. So um, some of our problems with channel two are the voter system. It, it is a 1970s um, design and it was the best thing that they had at the time and it works wonderfully when it works. But it's a, it is a direct line of sight um, it's a satellite, basically what it is. Um, it's got an antenna that, that reaches out in a circle, and when when um, I key up my mic and I'm close enough to get you that repeater, it picks me up, but then it has to shoot a, a, a direct line back to the repeater off the satellite. So wind blows your satellite off to the west a little bit or off to the east a little bit. Now we've got to call somebody to come down and, and readjust the main satellite because we don't have reception in that area. Well, wasn't Steve talking about from the previous meeting? Wasn't he talking about doing something with cell phones? Or we're trying. We're trying to do something with cell phones still. And I noticed um, there is a uh, it's kind of an EMS online kind of an email chat. I can't remember what it's called. So that uh, wouldn't be. He, he's not referring to your radio. Mm -hmm. so, he would like to do something with paging for the most part um, instead of buying pagers. Okay. Okay. Utilizing what people. I most, just didn't want to get our wires crossed. Right. Mo the problem with that is most people have cell phones. Not everybody does. Right. And maybe not everybody wants us to be sending them information on a cell phone. And <clears throat> some of these systems we've looked at require smartphones too. So, but I noticed a lot of a lot of people um, on that EMS uh, chatting area are talking. Oh, well, just this morning about that about cell phone dispatching type of stuff. So we're still looking at it but trying to find an affordable one that works well, especially with our cell phone coverage in this county, it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to take some time as well. Mm -hmm. So these two tactical channels will, will address our, uh, our radio usage and uh, keeping, keeping unnecessary traffic, non-emergency traffic off of, our, off of our main repeated channels. And they still will be scannable. People have access to these to, and put into their scanners. If they're within distance, they can still listen to us if they would like. So. <laughs> but that eight hundred dollars comes out of where? Either. That'll come out of um, probably. It will come out of a split between emergency preparedness, fire, and EMS. Um, I I want to take I want to start utilizing the emergency preparedness budget more. I can pay for that wholeheartedly out of emergency preparedness. But being that it's going to be utilized by fire, EMS, and emergency management, I'd like to split the cost for you three. So, but I have a line item in, in each one that will. Yeah, it's <laughs> close enough. He could do a whole bunch of extra Yeah, yeah, he could do a whole I guess I'll make a motion to leave Wild Ink to. Spend $820 on the two tactical radio channels. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. We uh, purchased two more tech tactical channels for $820. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Right. Motion carried. Okay. Do I have anything? Anything questions? Okay. Concerns? All of the other departments bring us accounts receivables and updates on income and stuff. Do you guys have a list of that? I wish I knew more about the um, the billing side of things, um, but I, yeah, I just do. I want to kind of 
I need to learn a lot more about it because really we have one person. Yes, we have one person you know yeah. that is solely in charge of that. Although I know from you know just kind of paying attention and looking a little bit, it's pretty darn convenient. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just like a hospital would build something out. In essence, it's got medical coding and and you have to well, like Doug Norris was talking about. I mean, I'm pretty sure we use QuickBooks as well. Um, you can't just assume that you're going to get paid right away. It's, it's an individual and it's an insurance company and when they want to pay, they pay. Yeah. So um, I'll take that back and I'll, I'll ask them if they can come up with a, uh, a monthly. Well, or just the accounts receivables, not necessarily monthly, but it's just something so we, we know. Instead of the end of the year, quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I mean, or, you, you know, know what we build out. Every business has an accounts receivable, whether it dates from that date clear to 120 days past due or whatever. Yeah. That way okay. we, we kind of are a little informed of that. Okay. Yep. Um, Steve and I are both scheduled for a meeting today. Steve went up to the Hyde about meeting the Great Bend. I'm sure it's all day, but I'll tell Misty. Okay. And then no, okay. when I call Steve, I'll tell him. Okay. okay. No. That works. Yeah. And if you guys want to, um, any time, learn more about the mess that is that we've got in emergency services, <laughs> come out and ask, because there's, there's a lot involved. And um, I, sometimes I think a lot of the community doesn't understand right. about that much of it. So if you guys ever want to try to figure out why I'm asking things more so, just Okay. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but 
but that's a lot closer to two other soil types that we have in the county as what is what they are used to. So, believe it or not, that we, we got a soil type change in this county. And that's, I don't think, ever happened. <laughs> But <laughs> it, it, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. And now you need to work on some like get a bigger difference between dry land and here. But no, that that really really tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. But there's there's our soil types. Which one is it? Yeah. Because other counties are fifty eight eighty seven. That's got to be a $5 an acre difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a yeah. What You know, what they're saying is, due to the extra expenses from getting water out of the ground and so forth, due to the extra expenses, they're offset. That it, it, it will produce, once again, the time of the rainfall and so forth, but it should produce just as good as dry rain. That's what they're looking at. And the, the eight years on this here study, would be 2003 to 2011. That's the gate on this study. These, these prices. Are there counties with the same soil types or the same values? No. They vary a little bit. They do go from county line to county line now when we work with the NRCS. Uh, there's the four digits. Um, they can vary a little bit. We're in the same district, but they might have a little bit different information for the crop practices. But they do relate, but they do relate now to where before DT may not be DT in Reno County. It could be something totally different, which is really confusing to those farmers in both counties. So, all in all, it looked pretty good. I'm really happy with the soil type 6330. So, and, and once again, if you see a stand or reading, you might want to tell them thanks for their, their assistance, locally because that's what it says. Okay, you guys can have that if you want it. Um, we're going to mail out the valuation notices uh, March 1st. I do that every year. So, I have to put a publication in the, in the newspaper. Um, this will go in there. We don't have to do the ag land, but we do just so that everybody can, you know, be able to see it. Um, I guess this is just for me. I was kind of disappointed to see us lose the St. John newspaper as our official paper because in the past, Stafford Courier has messed up this in the past. So I'm going to have to watch that pretty close because I don't want that to go in the paper and maybe one line off, one line off. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. That's what's happened in the past with Stafford Curry. So, just I was just a little disappointed to hear that. But we have to deal with that. Um, last Wednesday also was the uh, oil and gas meeting in Topeka when I was up there. Um, we should be hearing pretty quickly now on what our per barrel price will be for this year. Last year, let's you know, it was eighty-nine dollars per barrel. The year before, seventy dollars. So once we get that one a little bit more about the ones Okay. See what happens when you go to meeting? <clears throat> okay, this is where this is where we're at on the zoning. Like, and, and I'll get into that here in a little bit on, on our zoning. Right now we have two people that their uh, termination expires, Phyllis Staub. She was on the original board back in 1997. I just talked to her. She will not renew it. So we need to find somebody. And, and typically in the past, the commissioners might, might give us names and then we call them. Or if we come up with the name, we'll let you guys know on there. Uh, but we need to fill that. Uh, I talked to Marion Meshberger. He will do it. And he was on the original board in 1997. Those are the only two, so Marion will be on the only one left then. And then we have to replace Shane. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's already gone. <laughs> so we, are, we, are, we need two names then uh, to replace that and, and, and Ronnie Rome. Uh, 
I'm a gingerbread man. Um, if we have a zoning hearing between now and April, Phyllis will attend because her termination isn't until then. But we do need to find one person now uh, because Shane wouldn't be able to attend now. I mean, he could attend, he just wants some of the commission. Because the reason he can't do that is certain permits come as recommended by the zoning commission to recommend you guys. Mm -hmm. So he can't, you can't be on both. So we need a name. Uh, if you guys come up, we'll start looking. Uh, start looking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So you, you did have a name, didn't you? We did, but I can't remember who <clears throat> This we had one, we had, but was the name Maxfield? Yeah. I think the other name was at Maxfield. We definitely need somebody out of St. John. Yeah. Because of Phyllis. Okay, which brings me, since we're talking about zoning, I uh, got a call yesterday from from uh, somebody in Stafford County, and they said that there's a, the economic development was pushing these greenhouses and so forth, um, which I just talked to Carolyn Dunn, uh, and we had a little 10-minute discussion. What, what I requested to her is whatever they do, the economic development does, that land use can change, they need to really let us know. Because I knew nothing about the greenhouses, but yet I'm supposed to issue a permit. And the reason I, the reason that's so important is you don't have to build a structure to like a, a building permit. Zoning is land use, not if you're going to build something. If land use changes, that needs to be looked at by zoning. And if we don't know that, and I mean, Carol and I talked about this, it puts us behind it doesn't look real good in my opinion. So what we talked about like on the greenhouses is there's actually four different ways you might think a greenhouse is a greenhouse is a greenhouse, but they're not. A greenhouse for agricultural on a farm can be exempt from any permits because agricultural in Kansas is exempt from permits. Uh, or you could have a greenhouse just for distribution. That's a different, that would be like a conditional deal. Or you could have a greenhouse and you're selling off of your property. That is a special use permit. Or you can have this greenhouse, you could have your primary parcel as your dwelling, and you can have a home occupation greenhouse. That's why we need to know one permit doesn't fit everything. And so that's why Carol and I discussed, I think we're on the same page now, that land use changes, we need to know what, what they're working on. Not to get in their business, but we need to know, because my understanding, some of these greenhouses are ordered already. And three of these permits will take hearing, it'll take at least 30 days. Which you guys know that. Because it has to be published in the paper and so forth and so forth. So, she understands that now. Yes. Okay. So that's takes care of zoning. On there. Values uh, we're going um, you know, values out March first. Um, they they have gone up. As you can see that use values have gone up considerably. If you guys get phone calls, if you would just have to call us and then we can go from there. Ag use value even for us is is hard to discuss over the phone. Because there's so many different characters into how these values got arrived at. So, so we can give a call. Okay? Thank you. Uh, not right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> still got the book. Yeah, that's that's, that's so actually the book. That's not true. I brought that because I didn't know if you had, wouldn't have zoning questions, I was going to get into a little more with you. Okay, now this here, this is mostly just to let you guys know that, as you know, I'm not elected, I'm appointed. Uh, actually, by you guys, um, and and this is for the uh, this is the first page is just to show that I have to have eligibility and you have to take exams and so forth like that. And have so many points. On the second page is the list of the courses and classes that I've taken in this last period that will be signed. Um, over half of them have to be tested courses. You can't just take seminars. You have to take the test and pass the exam. 
to be on the road And then on the last page, it's just a copy of the address commission, I think. Or I had to. No. And this just shows my contracts up in June. And Things are going to happen with the freight crosses across the state. So I got on this one. What do you mean, things are going to happen? Every four years, you have a group that retire. Every four years, you got a group that says they've had enough. <laughs> uh, every four years, you got a group that switches counties. Um, this year, there's going to be a lot of retirements in there. And to be honest, there's a big group that's had enough. <laughs> so that's what happens. That's just what, four years is a long time. And it's, uh, so. scary. You're in the scary. It's happy. And and you know, we, we, should, we should sometimes talk later on. So just want to let you know, though, that where we're at. Okay. All righty. All right, if you have any questions for me, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. Or, right. You probably will. I won't ask that question after March 1st, though. <laughs> when the value is going to out. I won't ask you if you have any questions for me after that. Okay. So we need two people for the zoning. One from St. John and one from Maxville. From the Maxville or the St. John area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like that. And one, the way these greenhouses are coming up, one probably pretty quick, actually. Uh, actually, a person in St. John would be, not right now, in, in your area, would be more than we need to fill that, because we're probably going to have a hearing in the next 30 days, the way it looks. And the workload on this, do you have a meeting every quarter, or just as needed? No, just as needed. Um, uh, you know, the very first board we, we met quite a bit to get things worked mm -hmm. out. Uh, one thing that we might do, um, we haven't done in a while, is maybe a year from now, uh, start setting up some meetings to do like in January, February, March, just to review the guides, to see if there's anything we want to add in that's happened since we did these back in 97. Um, of course, if we do that, uh, we have to get Dick and Foster involved. In and then that will be a, a, a cost to us. But it might be something that we might want to review, something like that. Because it has been a while. Neighborhood revitalization. Mm -hmm. We're still having applications. Record setting. Really? <laughs> That's good. Record setting. Yeah. The neighborhood revitalization, I think, is very, very, very successful. And we try to let people use it. I mean, that's, that's what we want. You know. Colonel, do you have a one-size-fits-all plan for Stafford County? Well, I don't know what one-size-fits-all means. As opposed to the four different plans? In we have County. one plan. Mm -hmm. Gee, all Stafford the County is a smart county. All the entities agree, you know, and that's what we push. Mm -hmm. One plan. That if the entities do not agree and start going to two plans or three plans or four, four plans, plans uh, it, it's going to get really confusing. And you, you have to remember this because it's a, it's a seven year program right. once you get in it. Well, when you have four plans seven years from now, I have to remember, or we have to remember what plan they're in and then what, what year they're in. And if it sells, where they're at. I mean, it, 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 and it, the reason Joe mentioned that is Ellsworth this year is going to a four year plan. Uh, four plan in seven one years. project. But it's still seven years. Uh, they, some of them switch. One oh, of them okay. is ten years, one of them is five. Two, two of them is ten years, two of them is five years. Oh, wow. So, but yeah, the, I, here it's working out very well. Do we pay for your continuing education or do you have to pay for it yourself? No, and, and this is probably what's good by having a district is uh, with the classes. Uh, each county kind of takes their turn on the class. Or say I may say uh, Ellsworth may pay for the the class. Uh, I may take Pawnee County's vehicle, and then but it alternates to where each county doesn't get bombarded. 
which when we did started doing that, that that lowered my uh, education program. Uh, basically, the county uh, share. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think since this is required, you know, I think, I think there are some some people that some county appraisers that do both, that do fee appraisals and mass appraisals. Uh, fee appraisals is what you know they do it for banker and loan institutions, mass appraisals, county appraisers. I think sometimes those counties make them pay. Depending on why they're why they're going to yeah. but I don't think that. But it's, it's cheaper for all three counties. All right. So back to neighborhood revitalization. Have you had some who forgot? Yes. They, 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 we didn't offer this. Oh, that we. Oh, I thought you no, no, forgot no. to pay their taxes. No, I mean because <laughs> there have been some of those. <laughs> no, I know that, but I mean. People are aware in the county that we're doing <coughs> neighborhood revitalization. You know, I think they are here probably as good as anywhere. Um, and, and one thing that, that I think is nice here is that people really don't try to hide anything from the appraiser's office. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That they have that mentality of if, 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 if I don't know it, we won't find it sort of, sort of mentality. And so they're more up front. With the, and I think zoning helped also uh, to, to get the paperwork done beforehand. And so there's probably some that have not participated mm -hmm. that probably should have, but some of them that did not participate didn't wouldn't have qualified anyway oh, okay. for a smaller project. <clears throat> so so if you look at it like that, there's probably very few that would have qualified value wise. But, didn't want to let us know. And really, that's that's getting smaller every year. I actually think uh, when we put the neighborhood revitalization on our magnetic signs, I think that's up over the years. Yeah. Just a good job of reminding people that don't know that. We try to call them. <laughs> we try to. Yeah. To win the bigger counties, you know, they don't have that luxury.
years ago, we used to get used highway like patrol vehicles, and it got ridiculous on how much we'd have to spend on repairs, on the transmissions that go out. And so we had a lot better luck with the new ones. Plus, when we get ready to trade, we get pretty good price. So you trade, you trade them on them. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess you better start shopping. All right. Well, get the bids. I'll get some bids. Three or four, five or six. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. We'll do it. Thank you. I'm doing it on icy day. Yeah. Okay, so what do we need to do now? The whole discretionary function also. Yeah. All right, let's recess.
Yeah, I really can't stipulate how we use the material or anything like that. Other than fact well, I think it's a two-way street, Terry. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're going to publish our minutes, they need to be accurate for what we discuss in our meeting, not what you pick and choose to have in your newspaper. No, not necessarily. I, I have but I'm not telling you can. I'm just saying that, you know, then if that's the case, then we'll just wait and you have the approved minutes. Well, it's not that you can't have them. You well, can they, have them once we approve them. No, we're not hold, we're not withholding them from you. Yes, you are. If I request those today, you have until Friday to give them to me. So you don't have time to approve them between now and Friday. If you got to want to come in and approve them on, on Friday or something, and give them to me then, then that's fine. But if I make a request on the CORA, you have 72 hours to comply with that request. You know, you said something about Pratt doesn't really serve until they approve. That's because Pratt has enough people, reporters, that they have a report that they can set to that they need. So he doesn't even ask for the minutes. He just goes entirely off the way of the We, unfortunately, have one person covered in Dutch County. We don't have that much. You know, in basketball, sports, and use everything else. I've got the time to spend every Wednesday here for three hours. So, I mean, that's the thing to say. It's, it's worked for eight years, right? How many changes did it you, you said something about you made a lot of changes to the minutes last week. What I just said we made a change the week before okay. on a boat. Yeah. I've only been here two weeks. Yeah, so, I mean, you said that you made a lot of changes on the phone to that. I didn't say a lot of changes. Because I said we changed one several. thing. Several. I said several. Oh. But anyway, I mean, I talked to her, and she said there's never been any changes made. Of course, it's never, it's never, never been a matter of her. Yeah, I know. It's already improved on what they should be doing. But like I said, it's been so nice for the results. So you guys wait and come in and approve them. If you're going to do it that way, then you're going to have to come in and approve them earlier so that you can follow in your open records back and forth. Well, I kind of have a question for Nita. Would it be that difficult to have, you know, a title draft minutes? No, and then. But. Then just when it's approved, you just delete that and make it official minutes. Right. Because you're doing it on a work but, process. I right? mean, if he's a, is he going to put that in the paper? Yeah, I'd say I may not necessarily put That's that in the That's the issue here. Well, well I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we have the right to edit your newspaper. No, we don't. Exactly, you don't. And like I said, I have no problem with doing it, providing spaces uh, available, but I don't want you guys legislating to me that I have to do it. Because number one, you don't have the right. And number two, I don't want to be held to have to do it every time, and then I mess up and don't get it in for whatever reason. Then you guys come back and try to come back on me and have the recourse that we just complain about not giving to you next time. It, be, because if, if Nita puts down draft minutes, she can just email it to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is what we've always done yeah. in the past for the last eight years. And then find the that fine. Very smart. As long as the word draft is in there. Like I say, that may not necessarily make it in there, so that can't be a stipulation for the ministry, because I don't always run your ministry. I, I, can't, I can't stipulate that you put that in there, or we can't, but we can, if that's not in there, just sure. decide to turn them over when they're approved. Five, well, you five letters in there. Have you read this yet? There's a can so correct. If you'd like to I've read it. I've been to it several, several times, and there's no exemption in there for county. Not one. And the closest thing that even comes is a draft, which wouldn't qualify in this case because the draft says unless mentioned during the meeting, we're going to make the minutes mentioned at every meeting. So that there's no during the meeting, so that limits that, that exemption from that. And basically, like I said, I'm here to get squared away because KPA is on me now to get something done. They said, you so get squared away, let us know. If if we send you the draft, you're, you're reluctant to say this is a draft? I'm not reluctant to say it, but I don't want to be held to it. Because I say there may be something come up where it doesn't get in. You know, if it's in that first line with the uh, commissioners attended, what time the meeting starts, I generally don't put that in. I usually eliminate that. So if in that part it said this is a draft, this is blah, 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 and I don't catch it, and I wipe that sentence out, and I throw the minutes in, and I didn't catch that sentence, then I'm not doing what you guys want. And I mean, honestly, in the newspaper, the only thing you're required to do is if you sort of read, if you cross something else, and you're not even really required. It's suggested that you put source, like I did this week, at the bottom of the story, it says source, staff or county or official minutes, and a towel size tag on it. And I put that in there, and I'll be honest with you, I just about didn't have them for that. You know, so, I mean, I don't have a 
problem with doing it. I just have a problem with you guys telling me I have to do it because that's not within the power to do that according to the Kansas Open Records Act while I'll approach the proceedings county commission. She proceeds with whatever the rule board is. So, I mean, basically, you know, we can work together. I will get it in. I'm, I will try to get that in, but I don't want to be over there. We send it over to him with yeah. the draft minute thing in there. It's out of our hands. Yeah, right? if, if it comes yeah. out yeah. where we corrected 15 things the next week, and I'm, do I have to send him another draft of the it, official it, if, ones? If he requests it. Because, yeah, okay. yeah you got to really aren't obligated to get that in meeting minutes, period, unless they request it. It's just been a matter of what's all been done here. Yeah, for yeah. example, you could have a small town busy buddy who makes an official cake. I don't have a problem with trying to, to do it. I just like to say I don't want it to be a requirement for you guys that all of a sudden we read it and put that draft in the next one. If they do, I will follow an official request and send that to the primary moment KTA and do it then instead. I think the issue here is whether, you know, when they're published, then your readers will think that, well, this is this is what was done. This was official. Yeah. And I, you know, as far as, as submitting and you know, just saying a draft or whatever, I, I don't have any problems with that. It's all our desk for him. When you told me that I had to publish him and other people unofficial minutes and minutes were official ones. You guys. I asked if you would like if you could do that. And I said no, and you said that we're not going to do that. Well, then if you don't, because we won't bring this into the room. Exactly. We can get to it. How do you No, you can't. Well, it, it, it's it's something that's going to lead to litigation. The only problem with litigation is we get to deal with Mr. Merriam up in Topeka, who will just bury me in all kinds of paperwork, and we end up spending a lot of time and effort arguing over. You said five letters. I mean, I'd, I'd suggest you, you give Mr. Spradley a draft minutes, and you know, of course, if he wants to edit it however he wants to, well, that's you know between him and his God, because we, of course, just say, well, here's what we gave him. That, that's what I'm saying. If that's this is uh, if somebody calls and says, hey, the minutes say, or the newspaper said this, and well, that's on him. This is what the yeah. minutes say. Exactly. And I've done that before. People stop me on the street. Well, it said in the paper. Well, you know, come in and read the minutes. And then that's the biggest reason for running this paper is the paper. So we don't end up with a duty to teach truth in that line in there or something like that. And, you know, they say these are unofficial. Minutes. But that's on you. That's not on yeah, us. Exactly. I mean, it me. has nothing to do with you guys. That's fine with me. The consensus is that when we give him a draft, I mean, it's like that one quote was that well, we don't have to, but yet, on the other hand, you know, if you misquote, then the burden is on you. Yeah. It's not on you guys. No. Yeah. I, I save every press release to... I've ever done for about 10 years. We're downstairs in a series of three, three ring binders, so I can say, well, here's what he got. But look so at me for a lot of work. It sounds like it's to apply both newspapers and to go on the website too. Yeah. With draft minutes. Draft right. minutes. Yeah, it's supposed to be the way to the website. Well, I didn't last week. Until I did either. Okay. Well, that's what I was going to say. Alright, so we're in agreement. I'm, I'm happy, like I say, as long as you don't hold me to have them to put those in every time. I mean, I'll. I'll make up the tagline just like I do with the police and sheriff records and it'll say on the page, but if I get to run it down like a man they loaded to buy this truck and I don't have enough room for that, plus run that exemption, uh, official, unofficial minutes exemption, I'm going to put it out put stuff about the truck. I'll try to make my minutes shorter. Yeah, that's all right. I, don't, I haven't really had a problem with them. They all seem to fit pretty good for the space we can allow for them, but sometimes they're longer. No, they have one other small thing I was going to point out is on the county paper that comes out. out to you guys that you know that your official county paper now you can't buy it anywhere in the county except in the city of Stafford. There's no outlets for your county paper in Maxville. There's no outlets for your county paper in St. John. I have one in Maxville. I have five, four in St. John, and 
four threes. Three places in Stanford that you can find my paper on the Tom newspaper, but paper that's the official county paper in the whole west half of the county now the dark. Your half your half are kind of left out in the dark on the county paper as far as getting the information out of the county paper unless they want to subscribe to it on an annual basis. But somebody in Maxville says, hey, I've heard something in the paper about the county selling something or doing this or doing that, the guy can't drive down to the corners of the camp, town and country over there and buy a copy of the paper and look at it and see what it says and then have to drive all the way over to Stafford to get a copy of the paper. Unless you have internet access and then I don't want to be there. So that was just one thing I wanted to point out there, but that's neither here nor there. So. Alright, thank you. Okay. session for matters covered uh, by the attorney uh, client uh, exception to the Open Meetings Act. And I'm thinking, I'm going to suggest half hour because we can always come out early. I mean, uh, so we can adjourn. <laughs> you know, basically you can come out in five minutes. <laughs> but it's a pain in the rear to keep redo it because you have to go back on camera right. to redo it. So I always suggest longer than what I think it's going to take. I need a motion. I make a motion to go and take the session with Joe. Attorney Klein. Klein. Attorney Klein privilege. Second. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and second. We're going to a 30 minute executive session to discuss uh, attorney client privilege. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We're in executive session for 30 minutes. All right. Anything else? No, sir. For the remainder of the day. Do you guys need to sign those minutes? Do we, do we need to approve them? Yeah. yeah. I, well, move, I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting okay. with one grammatical error eliminated. It says hiring higher a part time person. What? <laughs> uh oh, you're, 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 you're going to step time. on toes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you do a great job. I wouldn't want to do it. But I second that. Okay, it's been moved to second. We accept the minutes of January 23rd, 2013. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, we're adjourned. <laughs>